So I've played Rise of the Tomb Raider twice through now, and I'm convinced this is one of the best action-adventure titles of this generation. This game had pretty big shoes to fill with the original Tomb Raider reboot of a few years ago being one of my favorite games of that year, and this sequel does almost everything just as good, just in different ways. Where in the original I really enjoyed the darker, more straightforward adventure, in Rise of the Tomb Raider they cut down on the let's see how many horrible situations Laura can endure moments, and they focus on giving her more open environments to explore, and this really allows you to focus on just being a treasure hunter this time around, instead of just trying to survive. It's not quite a open world game, but it taps that same addictive vein of I must get every check mark on this map before I press on, because I'll be damned if I miss that secret tomb. I know you seek the Divine Source, but my people will die to protect it. Your people are already dying. You can't protect it forever. We've lasted this long. But for now, I'm glad to have you as an ally. So let's get this out of the way before we delve into the good stuff. The story in this game is the weakest part of it, and it's as cliche as they come. Mean white guy is trying to get Sacred Artifact. Laura must also find Sacred Artifact. Mean guy has chance to kill Laura, but doesn't. Laura then is left alive to rain on his immortality pursuing parade for the rest of the duration. If you've been gaming for the last couple of decades, this kind of generic plot is going to do absolutely nothing for you, as you zone out every cutscene as you recall the 200 other games you've played with this exact same overly dramatic dialogue that has you ask yourself, has any human ever talked like this to any other human being ever? As soon as you hear the term Divine Source come up in the first five seconds of every conversation, you check right out of that scene. Everything you do in this game feels spot on, from poisoning packs of Laura-hungry wolves, to last-second leaps of faith that any pitfall veteran would be proud of, or just crafting a makeshift bomb out of an empty can of SpaghettiOs and marveling as you invent a new flavor of red sauce. All the upgrades that you make to your weapons, the abilities that you learn, and even the outfits that you wear all feel meaningful and you're grateful anytime you're bestowed another chance to pick one of these abilities that allow you new ways to slaughter every living thing in sight. So yes, the game feels good to play, but what else are you going to be doing? Well, this is not exactly an open world game, but you do go from linear story mission into a few large open environments where you can do various things to pass the time, like hunting, gathering stuff, gathering stuff, finding ancient tombs, and also gathering stuff. So speaking of all that stuff you're picking up all the time, which can be used to craft better gear, after playing the game twice through now, I have an options menu suggestion for everyone. Turn this off ASAP. The first time I played this game, I was so tired of games using this overplayed, pulsing, chromatic, idiot vision ability that always reminds you constantly that, hey dummy, you're playing a video game. This is a mechanic that we will look back on in 10 years, just like Bioshock's Go This Way arrow, always disgustingly lingering at the top of the screen, and we're going to think how bad at video games we all must have been back in the day. So my suggestion, just turn that off, actually use your eyeballs, look around, and in my experience on my second playthrough when I wasn't using that, I actually found more secrets and got more crafting materials because I was actually using my eyeballs. The gameplay loop of this game is quite enjoyable. The exploration is rewarding, the tombs offer great problem-solving puzzle contraptions that rival even a Zelda dungeon, and the combat encounters are little puzzles of death that have your mind racing with all the cool ways you can go about murdering this group of fools. So it's 2016 and I also played Uncharted 4 this year, and I never thought I would be saying this, but I enjoyed my time with Rise of the Tomb Raider more so than I did with Uncharted 4. Although Uncharted has it down in the storytelling department, I had moments of actual boredom in that game. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, the focus on gameplay and progression systems made it much more consistently exciting experience for me. These last two Tomb Raider titles are some of the best gaming of this generation, although not groundbreaking. They are both a solid 9.0 out of 10 gaming experience. I will now eagerly await Laura's next adventure of destruction and ponytails. This has been Deadite from Boomstick Gaming. Thanks for watching and keep it here for more reviews.